Uh, we're just going to look briefly at God's Word, not because we don't believe God's Word is important. We are a church that seeks to be saturated in the Bible. Um, so like um, Gordon and Sue and Magda were immersed in water, we want this church and our family to be immersed, saturated in the Bible. So we will take the Bible really seriously, but so that we can honour people's time, we're going to try and finish by noon. Not just finish what I'm saying, but finish our gathering by noon. And afterwards, uh, there will be time to celebrate um, and raise a glass of, of uh, non-alcoholic bubbly and have some refreshments uh, just next door. And then this afternoon, we have 250 or 260 people coming to a bounce extravaganza. And there'll be a big inflatable assault course here and games and activities helping us share the message of Jesus with our community. For that to happen, we would love it if people could move some chairs after the gathering. If someone's still sat on it, please don't move it. And don't just pile them up if you put them on the, on the trolley bits. Uh, but again, people in blue tops or wearing a lanyard will help. I believe God today wants to grow faith in us. Or start faith in people. Because there are times in our lives when we get to a dead end. For those joining online or for those who are visiting our community, this picture is just around the corner um, and there's a road that is closed. And if you want to go that way, you need to be diverted. But business is open as usual. And that's just around, our, around the corner. I wonder if, though, if you've tried to get into the village and just by your usual habit, you've still signaled to come in through that entrance. Yeah, anyone? Yeah, I, I have numerous times. And um, it's like business as usual. Yeah, I'm going on autopilot. And there are times in our lives where we find ourselves in a road-closed situation. Or, you know that kind of letter T, red bit with a white bit? What was it? A dead end or no through road. The Americans use dead end often. Um, we, we use the phrase no through roads. And there are situations in our lives where we come to it and we think no through road. Dead end. It could be in our homes with our families. And it just feels as if, well, what we see in front of us, there's no way through no way of changing that situation. It's a road closed. And my usual is to accept that road closed and dead end in my home. <clears throat> or it could be in our habits. And we're, we're stuck in, in, a, in a cycle that is causing grief to others and, our, and to ourselves. Uh, maybe even to God as well. And in our habits, we're in a dead end. And we just cannot see a way of breaking out. Magda referred to that. She said she got, into an, uh, got addicted to things to try and help her feel happy, but actually the cycle went the other way. It could be not just in our homes or in our habits, but it could be our health that actually we just feel that there's no way through. It's a dead end. And we approach our next appointment or the diagnosis that someone has given us as, well, there's no way through. This morning, I want to help each of us either grow in faith in Jesus who is the way through, the truth, and will bring life to that situation. Jesus who, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and, and wants to bring life in dead-end scenarios. And if you are a follower of Jesus, I want you to grow in faith in Jesus the way, the, the truth, and the life. So that when you come, or a friend or family member comes to a dead-end situation, you will approach it with faith in Jesus, rather than just accepting that it's a dead end. That your business as usual is you approach it with faith, rather than just accepting there's no way through. And if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, and you find yourself in a dead-end situation, 
I want to help you start a journey of faith in finding that Jesus is always able to provide a way through. How do I know that? Well, throughout the whole Bible, God always starts something out of nothing or, or provides a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. About 700 years before Jesus uh, was born and ministered and taught and, and died on the cross for our sins and rose again so that we could rise with him and be, be made, made alive and, and ha have life in all its fullness, which was the verse that uh, Gordon was given. 700 years before that, a, a guy who was listening to God, called Isaiah, wrote these words. And it's just underlined here, not the post-it note. He didn't write the post-it note. <laughs> But it says in Isaiah 43, verse 19, I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wastelands. Now, we don't want any more streams in Charlfont St. Peter. And we definitely don't want any more waste in the streams in Charlfont St. Peter. But this verse is a promise that God is able, always able, because God doesn't change. That's our verse for the year, isn't it? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is always able to make a way where there is no way. God can make a way where there is no way. So if you are in a dead-end situation, a road closed, there is a way. And I want to encourage you to turn to Jesus. In creation, God um, spoke, and out of nothing, creation came. Many of you would have heard of Goliath, the giant. There was no way that the people of Israel would, would um, defeat Goliath. He was too strong, too mighty, too scary. But a little boy with faith thought God can make a way. And Goliath was, um, was um, killed by David. Time and time again in the Old Testament... And then again in the new, we read stories of God making a way where there is no way. A widow in a place called Zarephath found herself in a dead-end situation. And her usual was basically leading her to die. But God provided a way and fed her and restored her, rescued her. Now there are times in our lives where we approach situations expecting a dead end. And the first thing that we need to start to do today is to stop expecting a dead end, but to approach every situation with the hope and expectation that God will make a way through. I know that the women on the first Easter Sunday morning were expecting a dead end. How do I know that from God's word? Because it says in verse 1 of Luke chapter 24, so Luke, a historian, doctor, that took eyewitness accounts of um, what people had seen Jesus do and heard, heard Jesus say, and he wrote it down, and in the 24th chapter, um, verse 1, it says, but very early on a Sunday morning, on the first day of the week, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. How do I know that they were going, that they had a, a dead end mindset? Because you don't go to a grave with spices unless you're expecting to use those spices to embalm a dead body. They were expecting a dead end. I wonder how many times we approach situations and go, yeah, it's just bad news. I just can't see a way through this. And we resolve almost, with, with everything that we are, we resolve to just accept that that's the, the lot that we have. On the first day of the week they go expecting a dead end and they could not be more wrong. And please know that when I say that they could, could not be more wrong, I'm not saying that against them. Because at least they went to honour the body of Jesus. At least they were willing to offer something to, to honour him and respect him and show love to him. But their thinking was wrong. And what we need is to change our expectation and align our thinking with God's planning. 
There's a photo if, if you want to just read what I just said. In the next few verses of Luke chapter 24, we see that there was an opening for them ready to explore. They found that the stone that had blocked the tomb was rolled away. So they go in. And as we change our thinking to align ourselves with God's uh, planning, God will provide a little window where we can look in and, and choose to explore with faith. It might be that you aren't a follower of Jesus today. And you've seen people being baptized and you've been in, in a place where people are singing with hands in the air and, and um, with flags and ribbons and thinking, you might be thinking, who is this Jesus that people are singing about? Why are they so excited about him? You see it in pop concerts. Matt, I'm just going on to black. You see it in pop concerts and um, football stadiums and things like that, but in a church, people are really excited about Jesus. And it might be that that's your window that you're curious about. And I just want to encourage you to be like these women, that they step in to find out some more. If you are a follower of Jesus, again, he, he gives us a little window to choose to have faith in. In each and every situation, there will be a moment where we've got to choose, will I approach this with a dead-end mindset or will I approach it with faith? Thankfully, in his, in his grace, he will give us multiple windows to explore. The passage goes on and they go in and they don't find the body of the Lord Jesus. But while they're wondering about what's going on, two angels in clothes that gleam brightly like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Now, how would you have answered that, that question? They're not expecting an answer, but how would you have answered them? Maybe you would have answered it with a question of, well, what do you mean the living? What do you mean? And I think sometimes we, when we have this window out of a dead end, where we could see it possible, a possible way that God is providing, and we need to choose to explore it by faith, there are questions that we have. And maybe the question that um, God is asking us as a church, a church family, a church community this morning, isn't just... Why, why are you looking for the living among the dead? But why do we so often or too often settle for the dead end status quo when there is a way through? There's a faith filled way through. We need to change our expectation and align our thinking with God's planning. And the angels, they say that Jesus isn't there, he's risen from the dead. They point towards him dying for, for our sin and being resurrected so that we can live for, for him and with him forever. God wants us to grow in expectation. On this Resurrection Sunday, he wants us to grow in expectation that he is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. If God can raise Jesus from the dead and bring to life a dead-end situation, what can he do in your life, or in your situation, in your home, in your habit, in your health? God wants us to approach dead-end situations with faith and expectation that he the way, the truth, and the life will provide a way by his truth and it will lead to life. And our prayer should be, God, make us a people of faith that see your possibility when faced with seeming impossibility. In a survey in 2022, 45% of the British uh, population um, said that they believed in the resurrection of Jesus, that it happened. 17% that they weren't sure, and then the rest said 
they didn't believe it. That's 45% of Christians, non-Christians in our nation that believe that the resurrection of Jesus happened. I wonder what percentage are living in the power of the resurrection and approach the, a dead-end situation with faith in Jesus and the power that God can bring a transformation to that situation. Oh, we need these vehicles in box. <laughs> Laying roads that last more than a two, two or three months. But oh, we need a church of Jesus Christ that lives by the power of the, of the resurrection and not just knows that it happened. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus today. We do so every Sunday. We celebrate it in baptism. But will we join in the prayer of Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 and pray that we will have our hearts flooded with the light of the resurrection so that, our un so that we can understand the confident hope that he has called us to. That we understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead. If we want to live in the power of the resurrection, we need to do what the women did. In verse 9, 10 and 11, they go and they tell the disciples. And we read in, um, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, 9, 10 and 11, that they go back and they tell um, the disciples what they had seen. And the disciples don't believe them because it sounds like nonsense. And there are times where we might f face a dead-end situation with our home life or our health or our habits and we say to someone, I think God might be able to provide a way. And they just laugh. Or they just think we're weird. And then in verse 12 of chapter 24, it says, However, Peter, out of all of the disciples, Peter had a glimmer of faith, a, a kind of seed of faith, and chose to explore. And within community, we will find people who will... Join us in seeking after faith in, in God. Unfortunately, we, we may also find people who will think that we're crazy. But let's be a church who, when someone comes up to us and says, I've got this dead-end situation, and I'm praying that God will give me faith to see a way through it, and that he will provide a way through it. Let's be a church that says, I'm going to believe that God can find a way through that as well. And I'm going to champion you through that. I'm going to explore it with you like Peter goes and explores the tomb. And what we see later on in, in chapter 24 is that um, Peter and these women have a personal encounter with Jesus. And he says to them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. In a dead-end situation... We need to change our expectation that God, the way, the truth, and the life can bring a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. He did that in a grave, and that's quite difficult to find a way out of. We need to align our thinking with God's planning, and in accordance with his words, change our, our usual to be in line with what it says in scripture. And we as a church need to be people who see a way in other people's lives. And as it says in verse 12 of Luke chapter 24, Jesus didn't need his grave clothes anymore. 